Greetings, everybody in Lukeman Nation. Good to see you. I am Jackie Lukeman, the People's Prophetess, and you are in another episode of the People's Power Lunch with me, Jackie Lukeman, People's Prophetess. Glad to see you. Glad to be here again. I had to take a week off last week while I was recovering from my little kidney biopsy, which I've talked about ad nauseum. Um, yeah, I'm doing okay, slowly getting back to, you know, regular stuff, slowly doing my daily walks. I had my little walk yesterday. Um, can't be really, you know, as strenuous, uh, vigorous as I usually uh, do have a pretty vigor vigorous walk, walk because, you know, when you get your kidney punctured, <laughs> eight, 10 times, it's going to take a minute to heal. So uh, I had a nice gentle walk uh, yesterday. Didn't have a chance to um, have a walk today. Had a couple of meetings, but I'm glad to be getting back into the swing of things. Like, I'm glad that you all are coming into the lunchroom. I see you. I see y'all coming into the lunchroom. Lene Demoy, what's going on, my friend? Good to see you. David Silberg, Ready Revolutionary One, Lisa Cassif, Catlett, hmm, so sorry, uh, Arif Hassam, Leah Boggs, 40J Blaze, AG, Alex Marquez, Perez, Courtney, Dorian, thank you. This is my favorite time of day too. Manny Nile, Eric Berkley, Big Teal. Oh, well, I'm so glad you guys are coming in and uh, finding a spot, something that you enjoy on the buffet. We do buffets here. Uh, we really love them in Luke Mon Nation. We love a good buffet with a lot of good selections for people to choose from. And once you get everything that you are um wanting to eat, then, you know, find a table with your friends and come in in an orderly fashion, sit down, find a good spot. Uh, Chirona, oh, who is this? Krona Ursa. Uh, hello. Find a good spot to come and sit and let's chop up a few topics. So I honestly, I have to tell you, I, I didn't pay any attention to anybody's news, um, but the time that I was kind of convalescing not doing extra stuff last week. So I'm catching up on stuff, but I, I had heard that y'all's Pope went to Canada and, uh, and was given an honorific that was kind of horrific, uh, quite horrific actually. Um, and <laughs> I, I don't even know what to, I don't even know what to say about this. Uh, let me um, adjust this picture so we can see it, all of it in its bizarre, just what the heck is going on. What, who did that y'all? Who, who put, who put a headdress on this man just because he, said he was sorry about those Indian schools in Canada that 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 tortured and murdered indigenous children. Who who said who said that was a good idea? And I don't I don't I don't pretend to speak for the indigenous people. I'm no, I'm not trying to do that at all. But this seems all that dude was said he was sorry. He didn't, I don't what what was true land back? Maybe. Did he talk about that? I don't think he talked about land back. I don't I don't think he talked about any kind of reparations for people's children being stolen and uh, tortured and abused and murdered in many, many thousands of cases. What? He gets a head trip? I, I'm appalled. I, I'm appalled that <laughs> this was um, just, you know, and, 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 and not only am I appalled, uh, so let me let me be clear that I'm not the only person who is appalled here. I don't want people to think that you know indigenous people are are not able to express their own uh, outrage at this uh, a complete and total mess because they they absolutely are. They they ain't happy 
with this foolishness. And as this uh, article in CNN shows, the Pope went to Canada to apologize. That's all he did. He said, I'm sorry about them residential schools and, and them tortured and killed indigenous kids. Sorry, sorry, y'all. Not even sorry, I apologize. Just sorry. Um, but for many indigenous people, particularly people who survived those indigenous school, that it, his apology just made it worse. It just because it what what did it mean? It didn't all it did. It was it was so performative. It was so incredibly, incredibly performative. So there are stories in this article that I'm not going to share them. They are very, very painful. Um, they are very, very traumatic, just horrible. But indigenous people um, in Canada and throughout the Americas, they ain't happy with this shit. And and uh, this is a problem that we have, I think, in all groups of oppressed people, being sure that we are not um, aligning ourselves with the empire and the colonizers and letting them off the hook for their imperialism and their colonization and the people they crushed underfoot to, you know, become empires and, and to colonize. So I just wanted to bring that up real quick. That is just that there's just such a foul. I just thought that was just so foul. Anyway, let me see what y'all have to say about this. Um, Thank you, Monty. Uh, the indigenous people asked the Canadian government for their artifacts back or, or the Pope, the, the Vatican asked the Vatican for their artifacts back that they stole, that they straight up stole. And guess what? The Vatican told them, hell no. Nope. Mm -mm. But but we're so sorry about those indigenous, about those res residential schools. <sighs> oh, Monty also points out that after they gave him the headdress, he blames the he blamed the government for the churches that under, understand that the residential schools were actually set up by uh, the Catholic Church with the government's approval and help, but the schools were run by the Catholic Church. Oh, okay. Anyway. Yeah, that's all that. Yeah, yes, CB. They, they were like, y'all ain't what artifacts, huh? What well, you know how you know how the Vatican is. The Vatican is a city and a government in into and unto itself. And they need they, they need to be overthrown just like every other imperialist institution in this world. Let's not let let's stop acting like the Vatican is untouchable in these conversations we're having about revolution. Not the Vatican and their little city within a city and their government are all a part unto itself. They need to be dealt with too. Yeah. Anyway, all right. So I wanted to talk about ah, this monkeypox thing. Um Sorry, let me go um, go back and, oops, sorry about that. I wanted to talk about the, the, the monkeypox outbreak um, because there's a lot of really dangerous, harmful, evil, hateful misinformation um, being spread about this virus. And the way the U.S. government is responding to the outbreak as it grows, um, anybody should have seen it coming. If the, I mean, we saw how this government responded to COVID, right? How under both Trump and Biden, not really. Um, particularly, and and even people in this country, particularly when it was realized that most of the people who were uh, getting um, chronically or, or seriously ill and dying from COVID were uh, Black and other mostly working class and poor people of color, then everybody else in the country was like, oh, well, COVID's not so bad. We don't need, we don't need any restrictions from the government. We don't need any anything. For, no, the government doesn't need to respond. Let them people die. When they said them people they really meant 
mostly black working class and poor uh, people of color. I mean, the studies prove that. So if people think this government is going to respond any differently to the growing spread of monkeypox in this country, I don't know what I don't, I don't know what y'all have been paying attention to. I honestly do not. This this country, this government of this country is going to let people um, contract this disease, spread it. And some people will probably die from it, even though it doesn't seem to be as fatal as as some uh, as COVID, I think, has been in, in its initial waves. But I had to learn about monkeypox. So I want to share with you what I have learned about monkeypox so that we can all be a little bit more knowledgeable about the disease and about uh, about the virus and about why this government is not going to. This government and people in this country, individual people, are not going to give a damn about people who, who spread and contract this disease. But okay, so let me share some facts that um, I learned. And if you are creeped out by um, pictures of um, uh, microscop microscopic pictures of viruses, I'm sorry, but I'm going to share one now. <laughs> this is from a Washington Post article, um, Understanding Monkeypox and How Outbreaks Spread. Actually, not so bad. Uh, and they point out in this article in the Washington Post that, first of all, monkeypox is a misnomer uh, re resulting from the fact that it was discovered at the uh, Statens Serum Institute in Copenhagen in 1958 when outbreaks of pox-like diseases occurred in monkeys that were kept for research. While monkeys are susceptible to it, just like humans are, they are not the, the source. So the monkey lobby around the world is like, stop blaming all viral outbreaks on us. We are not making y'all sick. Y'all humans are filthy, and that's just all there is to it. Uh, the virus belongs to the uh, let me see if I can pronounce this correctly, orthopox virus genus, which includes the variola virus, the cause of smallpox, the vaccina virus, which is used in the smallpox vaccine, and cowpox virus. So we should be calling this cowpox, I guess, but, you know, that that's the thing. So, so that was the first thing I thought that was very interesting um, in, in the fact that, you know, monkeypox is, it, it didn't, it doesn't, come from monkeys. Okay, so the first um, documented case of uh, monkeypox in a human being occurred in the 1970s in uh, the Congo, apparently, and it occurred in a little boy. All right, so that is good to know when we're talking about how this virus spreads. Because there is, and, and I'm, and I'm going to try to be, look, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a, I'm not a, <laughs> I'm not a virologist. Um, I'm not a medical anything. I'm learning about this stuff right along with you. So I'm sharing what I'm learning. So I'm not going to, you know, get some stuff right. I'm going to stumble. And, 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 you know, so if I, if I, if I offend or misspeak, I don't mean to, but look at here, y'all, I've encountered too many of us who have just acted a fool because one of the ways of transmission of monkeypox virus is through sex, particularly through gay sex. And this does not mean that this is the only way this virus is transmitted. But too damn many people. And I, and I had an encounter with a brother. I'll call him a brother because as wrong and as hateful as he was, I mean, well, no, I won't. He's not my brother because anybody that hateful, I don't want to be associated with them. They ain't my, they ain't my kinfolk. Um, making a big deal about the fact that this virus um, can be transmitted through uh, male, um, male and male sex. Here's the thing, y'all. 
That's not the only way this virus can be transmitted. Obviously, I just told you in 1975, or I think it was 75 or in the 70s, the first case of this virus was detected in a little boy in the Congo. You, do you think that kid was that? Come on. So obviously there is a component of transmission of this virus that does not include sexual activity at all. And this is where people are really, really fucking this whole narrative up. And I mean that, I mean that pun entirely intended because people are trying to make monkeypox out to be the new gay disease and it is not. That is a smear, that is a homophobic, hateful smear that people are using to, number one, dismiss a health issue that is, is being seen, um, that is affecting a particular community that's already marginalized. So just ridiculously, to, to, uh, to just dismiss that that so, that a certain group of people are more susceptible to contracting and spreading the disease, but also completely ignoring the fact that they're not the only people who are susceptible to contracting and spreading the disease. So it it serves to further marginalize and dehumanize already marginalized and dehumanized people, groups of people. And it, and, it, and it also, and, and to deny them the health treatment that they need. And, and then it also ignores that other people are susceptible too. And oh my God, this sounds just like the HIV AIDS ep epidemic to me. It really does. This whole period, this whole way people are responding to monkeypox. Monkeypox are, it's, it's giving very 1985 HIV AIDS. And it's and it's disgusting. But so let's talk about let us talk about how monkeypox is actually spread. Now, I the World Health Organization has its issues. Yes, they do. But they actually do put out pretty decent information about how this virus is spread. And very simple thing called a tweet. Pretty pretty simple. I like easy. So everybody can understand. Monkeypox spreads between people in many ways. Physical contact with someone with symptoms. This means all physical contact, not just sex. All right? Touching things contaminated with the virus, bedding, towels, clothes, etc. There's no sex in there. Through saliva through respiratory droplets. And then they say, and this is problematic, monkeypox spreads differently from COVID-19. Well, I think that COVID-19 is spread through saliva and respiratory droplets. Dro droplets. So I, I don't see how, I mean, the difference, I guess they're saying that because monkeypox is spread through physical touch and touching things, and largely COVID is not anymore. Maybe that's what they mean, but I, I recognize that th this statement right here is a little bit problematic, but these are all the ways, all of the ways that you can contract and spread the monkeypox virus. And, and you do not have to be a gay man who has sex with men in order to contract the virus in any of these ways. And we know that because guess what? The virus has been detected in children now. And y'all, here's what's gonna happen. And, and I think it's already happened with, with, with wackadoodles like Marjorie Taylor Greene tweeting about it. And no, I'm not gonna share that tweet because it was just so fucking ridiculous. You know, saying that if monkeypox can be found in children and it's spread by gay sex, then how are children being contracted? How just you see the connection that these crazy ass people are trying to make with demonizing gay people for giving children monkeypox now? That's oh my god, it's gotten to that level of ridiculousness that fast with 
the ignorance and the hatred surrounding the spread of this virus. Oh, God. Okay, so, okay. Um, the World Health Organization goes on to say that the typical symptoms of monkeypox include rash with blisters on your face, hands, feet, eyes, mouth, genitals, fever, headaches, muscle aches, low energy, swollen, limp nodes. Uh, they tell you how to protect yourself and others. Isolate and talk to a health worker if you have symptoms. And in, in this capitalist hellscape, where most of us don't have insurance and we sure don't have community clinics, what health worker? Who? What? Avoid skin to skin or face to face contact with anyone who has symptoms. Clean hands, objects, and surfaces that have been touched regularly. Clean. Wash your hands coming out of the bathroom, you filthy, disgusting human beings who don't wash your hands coming out because the virus has been found in every bodily fluid that we secrete. Wash your stinking hands, you filthy. And wear a mask, wear a mask, wear a damn mask. Okay. <laughs> And then, you know, they go on to say someone in close contact with an infectious person, person close contact, is the co close contact does not necessarily mean sex. It literally means you can be touching, hugging, kissing someone and you can get monkeypox. So stigmatizing people because of a disease, stigmatizing gay people because of monkeypox is never okay. And let me, for, for people who don't remember the um uh the the hiv aids response in this country back in 80 back in the 80s um i, I want to remind you of how that played out what it was like uh, but before i do i said a lot and i know you guys have a lot of comments so let me go back and see what you've had to say because i'm sure there's probably something i missed that um, you are probably going to in, uh, um, correct me on, and I hope so. Yes, Manny, absolutely. Physical contact, respiratory droplets, bodily fluids. Ugh, just keep your lips off me, wear your mask, wash your hands. What, how hard? Okay. Um, absolutely. Infections are popping up from surface contact transmission. That's right. And and I think it's being reported that the that the virus can be eradicated with typical household cleaners, um, but this is another one of those things where may, maybe it's not a great idea to have everybody in your house at this, time. <laughs> you know, maybe to go and go to public places. And I was thinking of going to the movies maybe this weekend to see um, uh, Nope, but Nope, not doing it. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see. Let's see what else you all. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, but this is this is this is an obvious rejoinder to the whole uh, gay men scared. Lesbians have sex too. Heterosexual people have sex. We all. It's all. Uh, yeah, I know. Okay. Thank you, Monty. This is the point with, with kids, with children being able to easily pick up this virus because kids are little germ bags. They're little germ bags. When they go to school, they share everything. When they're in daycare, they share toys. They, their parents send them the, send them the daycare and the school when they know they're sick with something because we got to go to work and we can't afford a babysitter. We can't afford to miss a day of work. So that kid has to go daycare this capitalist hellscape makes it impossible for parents to stay at home with their sick children that, come on let's be real here so and and kids they just really don't have a concept of personal space anyway so they're all up on each other sharing all the things so yeah of course kids are going to contract a virus that can be uh transmitted through surface contact way easily, way more easily than they could contract COVID. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you, Comrade Kwame, for pointing this out. And I, and I, I, I forgot this point. Mentioning or framing this as a gay disease is also keeping uh, so-called straight people uh, from reporting symptoms. That, that also happened with HIV and AIDS. Also happened. Yeah. The stigmatization works both ways. It, it causes a disservice to everyone, the community that's being stigmatized because they don't get the health care and honestly the compassion and the support that they deserve and need. And then the people who are not a part of their community don't want to be stigmatized, so they don't tell anybody when they know that they are infected with the disease that those folks over there are being stigmatized over. Oh, let's see. I'm not going to get into any uh, anything about bioengineering diseases or viruses. I told you at the beginning how the virus is spread from animals to humans. This whole thing about what once a virus has has escaped, either it's jumped human animal to human transmission or wherever the hell it came from. Once it has begun an infecting human beings. I, I mean, sure, there's a conversation that that might have some utility in whether it was manufactured or not, but I really want to get people the treatment and the protection that they need. And, I, and I'm not not I'm I'm not going to take up a whole lot of time, you know, talking about whether something was bioengineered or not, because I feel like those kind of arguments literally take up time where we could be talking about how to help people keep themselves and safe, keep them safe and save people's lives. Yeah, that's that's just me. Um, let's see. So so yeah, let me um <laughs> Manny said there's a very logical reason why it's more common among gay people. I learned about it in middle school, but I'm afraid I'm gonna get banned if I explain it. I mean I I'm for it, but you know, you know how sensitive people and and the and the al and the algorithms are. Oh, let's see. So what happened in um, the 80s with uh, the, the, the HIV and AIDS, I won't even call it a scare, because it really was a demonization of gay people um, in the 80s because of HIV and AIDS. Oh, let me see. Let me let, let me. I got, I'm I'm jumping around in my little notes here. Um, so in the '80s, HIV was very much, even in the media, talked about as a gay disease. And I mean, I remember this. I remember um, the news programs. Uh, really just like, you know, what is going on? At first they called it like the gay cancer. They literally called HIV a gay cancer because, um, thank you so much, uh, Martin Hernandez, uh, for the sticky. Uh, I'm, I'm on the mend. I'm feeling pretty good. And I'm trying to, to deftly walk through this information um, um, in, in, in a in as conscientious a way as, as, as I can. And so, you know, bear with me. So, I mean, j just the fact that gay men were suffering from a kind of cancer that epidemiologists at the time um, linked to specifically gay sex, and, and it was reported that way, like it was specifically gay sex that caused HIV AIDS. It, it, it wasn't like the fact that the virus um, is, was transmitted through, it's a blood-borne virus and it's transmitted through bodily fluids that can infect you if um, it, 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 
you are exposed to it through open, you know, open wounds in your skin, uh, that kind of thing. But, but, and it was wild because the epidemiologists, the so-called scientists, didn't explain it that way at all. It was very much a, a situation where, at least when it got to the media, oh, these are gay men having, you know, contracting a kind of cancer that they got because they have gay sex. <laughs> there was no explanation in the media about how the virus was transmitted through bodily fluids and the breaking of skin and, and introducing the fluid, um, uh, introducing the virus to another person through various different kinds of, of transmittal. Nope, none of that. Gay men, gay sex, gay cancer. So politicians paid no attention to like literally tens of thousands of gay people dying from this disease until one of their own had to come out of the closet because he contracted HIV and uh, was dying. And this is a Smithsonian Magazine. This is from Smithsonian Magazine. This is from a few years ago. But I, I, I do remember that most people um, even as the public learned more about HIV and AIDS, that it, you know, was a, a, a bodily fluid transmitted virus um, that could be um, uh, contracted through more than just gay sex, right? People were already, because of the stigmatization in the media of gay men, People still treated HIV and AIDS as a gay disease until Rock Hudson admitted that he was dying from AIDS. And this was in 1985, the year I graduated high school. And let me see if my, do my highlights, did my highlights save? Of course not, doggone it. I hate it when my highlights don't save. So, uh, Hudson was not only, if you don't know who Rock Hudson was, he was, you know, this, the man, one of those man's man Hollywood kind of actors, if you were into that kind of white guy type of thing, I was not. Um, and he never admitted that he was gay, uh, but it was kind of a, a well-known secret in Hollywood, uh, as was the case with a lot of gay actors, because homosexuality was stigmatized in Hollywood. So a lot of gay and lesbian actors uh, had what they, what people called at the time beards. They literally married people of the opposite sex to present the facade of being straight because they didn't want to be ostracized and blackballed out of Hollywood for being gay. So Rock Hudson was one of those people. And he actually, um, went to Paris to get treatment for HIV um, where they had early uh, retroviral treatments uh, uh, like HPA 23 were available um, because in the United States, in this white supremacist capitalist and at the time the moral majority was really uh, taking off in this country with Reagan's presidency, there was no there was no treatment for gay people in in, in this country. Not not like existed in Paris, um, and and Ronald Reagan and his policies were a reason for that because the Reagan administration had reduced funding for AIDS research and care. They were that hateful. But here's the thing, though. It was wild because Rock Hudson was a lifelong Republican and a staunch supporter of Ronald Reagan. That did not matter when Reagan and Nancy found out that man was gay and he was in, went to Paris to get treatment for HIV. Well, he had AIDS then, by then. They were like, we don't know you. Who, who is you? 
<sighs> so Rock Hudson uh, actually um, uh, put out a press release um, and admitting that he was gay and that he went to Paris for treatment. Um, and at that time, I remember the Reagan administration actually didn't even talk about the AIDS crisis at all. I mean, I don't, I don't even, and the Smithsonian Magazine points out that Reagan didn't even say the word AIDS in, in anything he said until after Rock Hudson announced that he had AIDS and he was seeking treatment for it in Paris. And then in September of that same year, you know, Reagan made some type of statement about, you know, oh, we need to do something about AIDS. Blah, blah. Um, and, and Nancy Reagan also refused to help Rock Hudson get the treatment he needed in Paris. Um, like I said, despite the fact that Hudson was a, a longtime supporter of uh, the Reagan's uh, campaign, and he was a friend of theirs for, mm. so as I, as I remember that time, in the United States with the way the federal government responded to uh, HIV and AIDS and the way people responded to HIV and AIDS. And I look at the way people are responding to monkeypox now, it looks and feels the same. It looks, feels, sounds the same to me because what's the Biden administration doing now? Um, not releasing all of the smallpox vaccines that actually are effective uh, in treating uh, um, in, in treating uh, a monkeypox. Um, and, and I think there is, excuse me, another vaccine that is also developed um, by one company that's also effective. Um, and, and it's just not enough. It's, it's not enough. Um, even though now we're, what we're not seeing from the Biden administration is the open homophobia from uh, that that came from the Reagan administration uh, and the so-called moral majority in this country at the time. We are seeing that um, this kind of of uh, what do I want to call it? Suggested homophobia from people like Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, or the inferred homophobia, I think I want to say, uh, from folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene and folks on the right who are trying to connect, you know, like I said earlier, children contracting monkeypox with, you know, some, you know, the, their, their mythical predatory gay uh, um, pedophile. You see what I'm saying? And the Biden administration not coming out and this is the same mistake they made. Well, it's not a mistake. This is the same bullshit they did with COVID. Not educating people on what the virus was, how it spread, how to protect it. Not, not providing a comprehensive education campaign about the virus. So now that the, the Biden administration, the Centers for Disease Control and all of the smart scientists under the Biden administration, they're not saying, a whole hell of a lot to the public about what monkeypox is, how it's spread, how it isn't, who can contract it, who can't. All of us can contract monkeypox, every single one of us, even if you are not gay. Everyone can contract this virus. But, but it's me saying that. It's, it's not anybody from the Biden administration. They, they awful silent. on combating the homophobic response that is growing among some folks in this country in regard to this virus. And just like ACT UP said, the uh, radical uh, gay lesbian um, uh, a group that was advocating for a better, a comprehensive and actual real federal response to HIV AIDS in the 80s and the 90s, just like ACT UP said then, silence equals death. Silence is complicity. The Biden administration not talking about, I mean, them not even making a statement 
as as halfway comprehensive as the World Health Organization's little bullet points on Twitter, I think that's criminal. I think that's absolutely criminal. And I think it is going to do nothing more than serve more stigmatization and it's going to serve a much more dangerous uh, or create a much more dangerous environment for gay people who are more susceptible to this virus but are not going to get the help they need because everybody thinks that it's a gay disease. And then more children and so-called straight, sachet men and women are going to contract the virus. But then because people don't want to be stigmatized themselves, they're not going to report it. And we're really never going to know how many people actually contract this virus exactly like what has happened with COVID, but for different reasons, but for different reasons. So that's a good question. Why not learn? Is Joe Biden that much different from Ronald Reagan? Nope, not at all. As a matter of fact, in many ways, Joe Biden is probably to the right of Ronald Reagan. Hell, Joe Biden is to the right of Richard Nixon. So no. Absolutely, absolutely not. And and thank you for pointing this out, Ricky. I haven't seen any real discussion about it except from my comrade who actually contracted it. Exactly. Exactly. The discussions that I have heard people have about monkeypox has been all about, oh, it's a gay man's disease. Men having sex with men. This is and it's the same kind of shit I heard during the the worst years of HIV AIDS where people were saying, well, you know, HIV AIDS is God's punishment for gay people being gay. It's the same people are saying the same dumb shit. The same hateful, homophobic, violent shit. That shit is violent. It is. Because you're literally saying you don't care if people die. So let me see, what else do I want to share with you about monkeypox in particular. As of Saturday, the United States, and that's this past Saturday, the United States has recorded nearly 3,000 cases, including two children. But what did I just say? The real toll is thought to be much higher as testing is only now being scaled up. What happened with the COVID? What happened? What happened to all the testing and tracing? What? Mm. Yeah, Britain and Spain each have about as many cases and the rest are distributed throughout about 70 countries. Um, For the second time in two years, the World Health Organization has taken the extraordinary step of declaring a global emergency. The World Health Organization has now declared monkeypox a global emergency. And uh, this was done by... um, the head of the WHO, there are now more than 16,000 cases and 75,000 cases. And this this is the kind of stuff that just like, oh, oh, anyway. Yeah, so Dr. Tedros uh, Adhanam, I always pronounce his middle name wrong, Dr. Tedros Adhanam Ghebreyesus, uh, W. HO's director general, and yeah, I know he's problematic politically too. He actually overruled a panel of advisors who could not come to a consensus, and he himself declared a public health emergency of international concern in regard to monkeypox. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, the only two other times in the history of the World Health Organization that they've done this was with COVID and polio. That's how serious this, the spread of this virus is. He said, we have an outbreak that is spread around the world rapidly through new modes of transmission. Now he said through new modes of transmission, but what did the Washington, what what did the New York Times say? We have an outbreak that is spread around the world rapidly through new modes of transmission about which we understand too little and which meets the criteria for a public health emergency. 
So this led me to kind of kind of look at how or when the first cases appeared in the United States. And let's see, let me go where, 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 where. So apparently, um, the first cases of monkeypox in the United States were reported uh, when animals, oh, here it is. Um, when, let me find it, in 2003, uh, the first outbreak outside of Africa occurred in the United States and was linked to animals imported from Ghana to Texas, which then infected pet prairie dogs. And that's how people got infected in 2003. Dozens of cases were recorded in that outbreak. Uh, and this is reflected, oh, I, I stopped sharing the article before I got to that part. I apologize. Let me go back to, this is uh, in this article here. Let me see if I can find it because this is really important information to understand about how long this virus has been spreading in this country that has nothing to do with gay sex, nothing whatsoever. Uh, let me see. Okay, so they talk about in this article, and this is, you see how long I had to scroll down in this New York Times article to get to um, the way this virus emerged. De deforestation, globalization, and climate change are creating more opportunities for pathogens to jump from animals to people. Now an emerging virus can quickly transcend national boundaries to become a global Threat, but most public health authorities remain equipped only to handle chronic diseases or small outbreaks. Uh, let me go down and see where it is that, let's see. All right, so I can't find it right now in this article, but they do point out that um, the first, as I said earlier, the first case diagnosed in humans was in 1970 in the Congo in a nine-year-old boy. Since then, most cases in humans have occurred in the rainforest areas of West and Central Africa. Nothing to do with gay sex, has everything to do with hunting culture and handling um, animals that may be infected and like, and you know, that animal's uh, fluids uh, coming in contact with the broken skin of someone who is handling, right? You just see that that person who is hunting was cut or scratched and that animal's blood getting into that person's. So do you see? But but then I, I, I asked the question, y'all. So If this virus has spread throughout Africa, uh, in the West and Central areas of Africa, how, how come the World Health Organization wasn't concerned about, you see where I'm going? Even when we look at the sometimes, um, there were locals, a uh, big deal. We're talking about Western and Central African people. They were they were mostly locals, so they were mostly Africans. Um, so you see, even when we look at uh, organizations like the World Health Organization, and they're declaring, you know, a, a global emergency for the spread of uh, monkeypox now that it's, you know, jumped the ocean. <laughs> And, and is present in all of these other countries that are not Africa, where was the concern for addressing the spread of the virus when it was in Africa? I, yeah, I have that question about the World Health Organization, even when, when they provide information that, that's useful. Come on now. So, hmm, all right. 
So I think that that's everything that I, uh, I wanted to share about this virus, everything that I know now, everything that I understand. Um, oh, um, of course, there is, because of the delay in testing and uh, vaccine distribution in the United States, uh, you know, health professionals are like, um, we're practically at the point of no return now where this thing has already gotten out of hand and the government waited too late to respond when they knew damn well that this virus, we literally heard about this virus, uh, cases of this virus uh, being reported in the United States a, a couple of months ago. And now we're talking about 3,000, uh, more than 3,000 cases. All those people are not gay men having gay sex. Come on. Uh, one of those health professionals said that there's almost capitulation that we cannot stop the monkeypox virus from establishing itself in a more permanent way. What what has what has happened with COVID now? Oh, get back to normal and learn how to live with COVID. That's we're already at that point with monkeypox as far as the government response is concerned. Hmm, let's see, what else did I, what else did I want to share you? Um, U.S. will share with you. U.S. officials have already expanded testing too late, made tens of thousands of vaccines available and made plans to release another 1.6 million doses in the coming months. But I, again, with, with, are, are, are the vaccines free? <laughs> How are they going to be distributed? Who is going to be, um, available, who is going to be uh, not available, who is going to uh, uh, be able to receive them? Can everybody receive a vaccine? Or th These are questions we shouldn't have to be sitting here asking ourselves how, who, who, who can answer these questions for us because the government should have responded. They should have been talking about this. They should have been educating people about this a long time ago. But because they have not, monkeypox, I fear, will be as permanent a fixture as COVID has become. And we know about viruses. If you didn't understand about viruses before, now, since COVID, you know that viruses have variants well, if they are not stopped. Viruses, when they're continue, when they're continue, when they continue to spread, they mutate. They have variations, they have variants. And the variants sometimes don't respond to the vaccines that were developed for the initial strain. That's where we already are with monkeypox. Oh, okay. Let's see. Oh, so I wanted to. And uh, just just to terrify you even more, if you weren't already really just completely, ooh, there it is, freaked out about um, the growing ease which with viruses emerge and spread. The first U.S. polio case in nearly a decade was reported in New York. I thought we eradicated polio. We actually do have a vaccine for polio. I thought that polio was eradicated. Well, apparently not. Based on what we know about this case and polio in general, the New York Department of Health strongly recommends that unvaccinated individuals get vaccinated or boosted with the FDA approved IPV polio vaccine as soon as possible. <sighs> mm. In the Rockland County, New York case, the patient developed paralysis, but is no longer contagious. <sighs> it is likely that the person contracted the disease from someone who had received 
a type of live polio vaccine administered only in other countries. Uh, the AP reported the person had not traveled recently outside the country. I, this whole vaccine hysteria uh, that has fomented in this country is also going to create a problem with diseases, viruses that we thought we had eradicated in the past re-emerging, like polio. This article um, from WebMD says polio spread from person to person or through contaminated water. Even in this capitalist, so-called highly developed country, we do know that the infrastructure in many places in this country, particularly where poor, working class and oppressed, Black, uh, Mexican descended and indigenous people live, uh, water infrastructure is garbage. Uh, remember in Flint, people died of Legionnaire's disease because of the water crisis. Uh, it can cause paralysis, permanent disability, and death after infecting a person's spinal cord. <sighs> the disease is endemic in Afghanistan and Pakistan. I, I y'all, I don't know what to say at this point other than wear your damn mask. Wear your damned mask. Wash your filthy hands. Keep your hands off people. <laughs> I just don't know what else to say. And if you are experiencing any symptoms that seem more severe than a cold, please report to a doctor, to a mental health clinic, emergency care, something, something. And, and, I, and, and I feel weird saying that, knowing that we live in a capitalist country and, and most working class and poor people can't afford medical care. So who are people going to, who, who people, who are people going to report, uh, uh, you know, their sickness to? How? This is why at the end of the day, um, making sure we are moving closer to a revolution in this country that topples this capitalist system that denies the basic human right of healthcare to so many people is destroyed and that we implement scientific socialism for all of our collective good. You know, it's a doggone shame. I, I, and I'm gonna close with this. It's a doggone shame that, that I am like, I don't wanna, <laughs> I don't want to be that American who's like, I'm going to go to Cuba and get health care for my chronic illness because I can sort of afford to. I don't, I don't want to be that person. But I also don't want to subject myself to all of the multiple inadequacies and exploitations and denials of health um, uh, equality and health care and quality health care that is this capitalist health care system. I don't want to be that kind of person who's like, I'm going to go to Cuba to get treatment for my chronic kidney disease. But I'm not going to sit here and lie and say that I do not feel like I want to go to Cuba to get treatment for my chronic, a chronic kidney disease. I just, oh, but see, we should not have to, we shouldn't have to go to another country to be treated like a human being and have our human rights respected in regard to health care or housing or education or anything else. We should have that here. And that's what we have to fight for. That is absolutely what we have to fight for. So thank you all very much for joining me on today's People's Power Lunch. I really hope that it was informative. I hope I connected the dots uh, well enough so that we stay away from demonizing our brothers and sisters in the gay community who are struggling with uh, uh, another <laughs> unfortunate um, health 
crisis and also the crisis of capitalism and also the crisis of homophobia in this country and transphobia as well. Um, I hope you learned something and Lord have mercy, wear your, wear your mask, wash your hands, be careful, be safe, take care of yourselves, take care of each other because we are all we've got. And until next time, people, Aluta Continua, the struggle absolutely continues, but Victoria Acerta, victory is certain. I'll see you next time. Peace.